In this video, we're going to look at the four categories of places that you can use Elementor AI currently inside Elementor. So the first one is Elementor Text, which you use inside the Elementor Editor. This is available for free Elementor users and pro users. So any text element that you drag in here, like heading for example, you're going to see a little write with AI icon right here. And Text Editor has one as well. If button has one. Button does not. Button is too simple. But anything where you put larger amounts of text, and those two come with the free version, but then there's going to be some that come with the paid version, like maybe the carousel or uh, the accordion maybe for the accordion content. Yeah, here's right with AI for the title of the accordion and for the content of the accordion. And that's for the pro version because that's a pro widget. But anything, not anything, the title and the text editor are free, Elementor free widgets, and so you can use AI with those. And to get the best output from AI, you gotta give it good input. AI is very much garbage in, garbage out. Click on Write with AI to access it, and here you can click on one of these prompts to help you get started with your prompt. I've got a separate video that shows you how to get the best out of your AI prompts for your AI writing, and there also is an upgrade you have to do. So we've got 96% left on our free trial, trial for me. If we upgrade to unlimited, they want to charge us money for that. And here's what it is. And you can use ChatGTP for free. It's an extra step. It's not built right into Elementor, but it's free. And chances are Elementor uses it as well. So they're just adding a bit of convenience and then charging you money for that convenience. Whether you want to do that or not is up to you. So another place where you can use Elementor AI is with CSS. So if we go to any widget and then go to advanced and scroll down to custom CSS. This is available if you have any kind of paid level of Elementor, not for the free one because they don't have the custom CSS capabilities in the free version. Click on the AI icon and now we can have it write code. So make the text red. Generate code. Here's what it generated, which is the correct CSS. Although selector, you probably want to have more than that in most cases, like P for example, which is the tag for paragraph, but with just selector it could work. And Elementor does not provide support for CSS. So if you have any errors in here, it's up to you to fix them. Insert when you're ready. And now look, the text is red. It's that simple. And that's a really simple change for a CSS. But if, if you're animating things, you're creating transitions with CSS, it's going to generate code for you, but you don't know if it's right unless you know what you're doing with CSS. So this definitely speeds up your workflow if you are a CSS user already, but it can be detrimental if you're not, unless it's really simple stuff like this. The next place that we use AI with Elementor is images. You can now generate images with AI. And every one of these, I've got a whole video going through the ins and outs of using all these things. They're linked to in the description down below or the card up above or both. And then here you can use images. There's a bunch of image tools as well that I go into in the video. So if we say, use this image, for example, and then we click on create with AI again, we now have this image that we can then use these tools with. And the video I referenced a moment ago, I go in depth with all these tools to show you how to use them. So that's the third place that you can use AI with Elementor. The fourth place is outside of the editor. So if we head back to the dashboard and we go to Elementor templates, no, Elementor, and then go to custom code and click on add new custom code. Let's give it a name like meta retargeting pixel. This goes in the head section. I'm gonna copy this, click on write code and let's say please insert the meta retargeting pixel, generate code. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. And here is the retargeting pixel. You have to make some changes. I don't know what's what, but the MRC looks like it's gonna be the unique identifier of your Facebook ad account that you have to replace with, with your actual information. If we just copy and paste, or we just insert this and save it and think we're off to the races, we're not. This needs to be updated with your actual true account information. So whenever you're integrating things like Google Analytics code, um, Google Search Engine Console code, any Search Engine Console for any of the search engines, retargeting pixels, what, what have you, you need to get the specific identifier for your account. And that begs the question, why do we need the code generator? Because now 
I've got to log into Facebook and I've got to find the retargeting pixel in, in Facebook to then copy and paste into here. So why would I even generate this? I don't know. A great um, different use that's not something like that where you'd have to copy and paste from those places anyway from those platforms is custom code that you use on your website. An example could be sticky header. I know Elementor has sticky header options already, but bear with me. This is just an example of code that wouldn't be connecting to a different platform. This would be code that you generate in your site and use just in your site with no external connections. If we click on write code and we can use these examples here, but I'm going to just put in here, please write the code to make the header of my site sticky. Generate code. And it created an entire HTML document. Here's CSS. Here's the body. So it's got the header class here, header class here. So what it's done is created a whole HTML document with a sticky header. So what you'd have to do is get a little creative and just pull out the parts that you need. And again, that begs the question, if you are pulling out the parts that you need, you kind of already know what you're doing. So why are we generating this? And here's the instructions on how to use it. It explains the code up here, which is great. I mean, this, I mean, you copy and paste this into a text file on your, on your hard drive and you can actually run this. It's all, there's nothing dynamic here. So you could run this on your computer and it, there'd be an actual sticky header. You'd have to add more content here to actually have it so you can scroll and see the sticky header. But if you already know what you're doing, you just, you know what you're doing already. You wouldn't need to generate this. So uh, currently I'm having trouble figuring out where exactly or for what, exactly what purpose I'd be using the code generator here. And people who know how to code and even know the basics about CSS and JavaScript and HTML are probably wondering the same thing. Maybe it's just to speed up our work. But since you have to pay for Elementor AI and you already know what you're doing, I don't know why you would. Either way, this is the fourth place you can use Elementor AI currently. And of course, when you save whatever you're saving here in code, you wanna change or choose a condition where you want the code to appear, just like when you're creating pop-ups. So for a heady, or sorry, for a sticky header, you probably want that on the entire site, but you can be very specific in where you have these things appear. And actually you can't be that specific, can you? But there is some specificity on where it appears, but not like timing wise. With the pop-ups, you can have timing and dates and date ranges and things like that. Whereas here you cannot for the code. Either way, those are the four places you can use AI and Elementor. If you want to see a more in-depth tutorial for each one, those are linked to in the description down below. And maybe I'll put in a playlist that I'll put up here. And if you like AI and you want to learn more about being productive with AI in general, check out my other channel called the AI Underground right here, where it's all about AI and helping you get better at it and making you more productive in your work life, your home life, your spiritual life, whatever it is, AI can potentially help you be better at what you do. So check out that channel right there. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.